Now look, if you are suffering from severe back pain and are also working as a developer, coincidentally you might be using something like a NoSQL database such as Firebase. And as I talked about in the past, the first project I ever did in my web development was, was with um, Firebase and the problem there is you don't know which columns or rows or stuff you have in your database and you have to kind of guess in your code. Obviously, you know which ones they are from your back end, but you don't get any type safety when actually trying to write out your database queries. And that's kind of a big problem. And that was also the reason that for the longest time I avoided working with MongoDB. I just didn't like the approach of this whole no SQL thing, even though it does provide a few really crucial advantages. For example, it can sometimes be a bit faster than SQL, but the type safety was always just a big issue. Now Prisma makes it really cool to work with no SQL databases. And we can try that out together in this video by setting up a database with Prisma and MongoDB. It's really easy and allows you all the benefits of NoSQL while also being totally type safe in your backend. So there are kind of just advantages to this. Um, so let's get started in setting up the database. The first thing we're gonna do is type npx or yarn prisma init. And what that's gonna do for us is set up the database files for us. So that's gonna be the schema.prisma, which is gonna be essentially the language we're using to interact with our database. And everything that we have in our database is gonna be saved in that file. Now, if you've never worked with prisma, it's an ORM, which stands for object relational mapping, essentially meaning we abstract the logic away from the database into a file, and in this case, that's gonna be Prisma with its own syntax. So we don't have to write um, database specific syntax, but can instead for every database that Prisma supports, which is something like SQL, NoSQL, MongoDB, for example, um, CockroachDB, which, which is Postgres. Essentially for all those databases, we have one syntax that we can write, and that's a really clean syntax giving us type safety on the front end. So after initializing our database, we are gonna um, have this file like this, as you can see on the screen right here. And in here, you can see the database URL that we need. This is gonna be the connection string that allows us to connect Prisma to our database. And in the case of MongoDB, to get this string, we first need to create a cluster. Now with MongoDB, that is totally free. You can get started with a free cluster, which I believe gives you about like 512 megabytes of storage. Um, we can create a cluster really easily in the MongoDB um, Atlas app. And then when we click on connect, we actually get the access details. Now the password here is gonna be whatever we generated inside of MongoDB. And this connection string goes into our .env file with whatever you've configured in your schema.prisma. And after saving that env file and the schema.prisma, we can actually try pushing some data into our database. So let's do that. And if you get this error, then chances are you need the name of your database at the end of the connection string. That's what I first got when I started uh, to set up MongoDB with Prisma. So just enter the name of your database at the end of the string, and then you can actually push data into your NoSQL database. And now you get all the advantages of having a NoSQL database while also getting full type safety for all your database queries through Prisma. And the reason this is so useful is because it saves you a lot of time in the long run. With Firebase, you can access the main Firebase and then you have to type a dot and then the property for each row or column that you want to access. Now, if you've never worked with Firebase, good. Stay like that, I don't know. It, I don't think it's really worth it, even though it handles all the auth and stuff for you. You don't need to worry about authentication, for example, at all, which is pretty handy, um, but there are some limitations to Firebase and this um, interaction with the database is just kind of a huge pain point. And with Prisma, the exact opposite, which is the full type safe way to do it, um, you can just type your database query by typing the Prisma, which you initialize globally. And then when typing a dot and hitting your command spacebar, you can see all of the options that you have. So you can see the properties that we initialize. So for example, an account or whatever you have in your database. And then you can access all the Prisma methods that you have, like create or absurd or update or delete and all of that stuff. And you can see exactly when and which properties are needed to perform that database query. And I think that is the beauty of Prisma. 
And if you take a look at what Prisma supports, as you can see in here, there's a bunch of stuff, even SQLite, if that's what you wanted, if you just want to persist some data locally, for example. Um, but what I mostly do is these hosted cloud solutions, either through something like Planet Scale or CockroachDB, or in this case, MongoDB, which works just fine as well. Now, there are some Mongo specific things that you need to pay attention to if you choose a no SQL database with Prisma. And that's gonna be, for example, the ID. Right? If you compare what the ID looks like in a um, SQL hosted database and then in a no SQL one, you can see there are a bunch of differences um, in the ID space. So with MongoDB, it's way longer and it's kind of a different syntax that you have to map to because in Mongo, the ID that you have actually has an underscore in front of it. And according to the Prisma documentation, that is not supported. So essentially generate an ID and then map it to that underscore ID that is native in MongoDB and thereby bypassing the kind of restriction that Mongo places upon you. And now you can work in a type safe way with all the benefits of a NoSQL database. Now, if you prefer SQL or NoSQL is very dependent on your experience with those kinds of databases. But what I am gonna do in a next video is actually compare the speeds of some different databases, like the performance, the query speed, the write speed. And we're gonna do that with a couple of databases. So my most used ones are probably MongoDB, PlanetScale, CockroachDB. I think those three are gonna be pretty good. And then maybe we will also include something like SQLite as a comparison. Um, but that's just a little teaser for the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.